Hey guys, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer and Alan Kay, as usual, is behind the camera. <laughs> Today we want to discuss some chopping tools. The primary chopping tools that you're going to think about are going to most likely be an axe and a machete. Um, these are going to be the most common type chopping tools and there's pros and cons to both and we're going to discuss those in detail and we're also going to show what we think is pretty much the, the best of both worlds, bridging the gap between these two. Right here, it's hitting all up because of the length. The so length is see, a hindrance, yeah. Sometimes it's an advantage. Like yeah. on that cut, it was good. But here, it's kind of like, and then the way, there we go. And, and that's where the kukri excels. For something like that, it's just, this is not, you got to choke up on it and kind of yeah. chew at it. And a machete or a kukri would probably yeah. be better on that. Because you're losing some of your potential energy when you're trying to work up a, a, a fell down brush, you know. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's that. Yeah. That yep. is the design for yep. purpose built hack slash through small green stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and it's that too. Seven notch is a good test because you do a lot of that with traps, you know. And you can do it with about anything. The best uh, advice I've ever heard was given to me by a trainer, and I don't even recall which one or where it was, but he said, if you will do, it will do. And that stuck in my head. If you will do, it will do. So it doesn't really matter as much as we think about the tool but your will to do the thing you know whatever the thing is it will do it'll do if you will do it will do this is where the axe does not shine is the fine carving text it'll do it but it's just not as good
All right, split with uh, the machete. <laughs> Say that again, you want me to split with this? I want you to split with the machete. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very yeah. different. Yeah, this will be different. I've actually never tried to split with a machete. I guess I'm gonna get down toward the bottom. <laughs> and there's that. And there's that. <laughs> Excalibur will not be withdrawn. So we're gonna need a baton from the stone to I'm get, have to that get a out. baton. A baton. A baton. Hey, and now in fairness, in fairness, the machete was hitting a thicker piece of wood here, but the blade profile is just so thin. It's well, gonna be a terrible. If I get it out, I'm gonna go for a hit corner. a small piece. Yeah. Yeah, but you'll find out how tough the machete is. It's a tough one. Now we that machete costs fifteen dollars, but it's legit. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Machete splitting. Coming over here now. Okay. We got that one. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take smaller bites. Got that one. And I'm going to take this corner. Well, got a little off. Ooh. <laughs> Baton. So there's the big drawback to trying to split. Yeah. With that one. So. We're taking a much bigger bite, but we did affect. Yeah. This is due to the blade geometry, which is wedge-like. Which is designed for splitting exactly wood. Exactly this activity. Yeah, an easier withdrawal, most notable than the machete. Now that was almost in the same footprint, but not quite. There we go. Ta-da. Now, once you get it down smaller, no problem. Same as the others. Yeah. Now, obviously, I brought this out here. Obviously, we could use a larger full size felling axe like this one here. Let's do it. And it will split much better. Voila, monsieur. But I wanted to do kind of apples to apples, kind of similar sized, similar sized tools. How's that make you feel? Makes me feel pretty good. <laughs> and it comes out easier than the machete. Much easier than the machete, yeah. yeah. Because of the wedge-like blade yeah. geometry. Like if we want to do precision work. See, that's perfectly capable of detailed work. says a lot about how much I trust you being this close to a man. Doesn't it? <laughs> Wielding a very large knife.
Yeah. And that you, works. And you can carve a spoon with it. And you can carve a spoon with it. Yeah. Do the same thing with another tool. What? Do the same thing with a different tool. Why are you trying to tell me how to live my life? Don't you know that I like doing cookies? Once I get started. I'm a cookery like, man. It's like potato chips, man. You can't just eat one and be like, oh, you're done now. So all the cookery time you get, really? you're cut off. <laughs> and look, look at that. So when people say, oh, you, it won't do detailed work, that's, that's pretty fine. I have seen some people will do the old planet yeah, that method too. and then come in here and just use the blade in that fashion. And the deeper you go, like at this angle, and pull a little more, you get a deeper bite. Or you can get right on the edge, keep it shallow, and you'll get really fine curls like that. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm cleaning fish, I'll just grasp the blade kind of like so, you know. Or and, and it, I'll use skinning that. an animal, same yeah, deal, right? I mean, yeah, you just do that. And you know, on a larger animal, aiming right about here, you can hold the ribs and go down alongside the backbone with one cut and just separate the ribs and turn them on their side, bust them down to smaller sections. It, it really does. And how is an ax for I've field done dressing? It. And, I've uh, done it. And axes aren't bad. That's yeah. the thing, really. If you will do, it will do. Yeah. Any of these will do. Yeah. I choose, I'll tell you what, why I like a kukri. I mean, you can see the thickness. All the way up to the tip. See how thick it is just shy of the tip? Like they talk about tip breaking strength. You're not going to break that. Oh, look at the blisters on my hands. Jeez. <laughs> Hand drills are horrible, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. So I like that. Yeah. Uh, it's full tang. You know, there's really, it'll do everything. And it'll do it with one hand reasonably well if you're operating with an injury, which I always assume. I basically, right now, my right arm is not at 100%. So axes, you can choke up on them and use them. But not with, as well. With one hand, but yeah. it's not as cool, you know. Yeah. But this, I have literally cleaned tea tiny fish with it all the way up to building the house and chopping the firewood up. I mean, it'll do. So that's kind of why I go back to it, you know. Yeah, and with a thinner blade, you do have to sometimes get into a little bit of tapping and Yeah, I wrapped, I wrapped the paracord around this one so I could choke up on it. Yeah. And it gives it, it makes it, it's almost where the center of the weight is, the center, the balance point. Mm -hmm. So you choke up there and it's just nice and easy and to, to manipulate there. But you could do the same deal with that or out on the tip it works pretty good just if you want to do some quick curls should I should I be it's a neck it's your new neck knife <laughs> my new neck knife <laughs> compact subcompact neck knife mm -hmm. very concealable urban carry very concealable you just put a Nobody will notice that. Put a, a shawl over a top. Shawl. That's what I need. Yeah. What would the draw stroke look like? Like that, I guess, on the neck sheath. <laughs> it's perfect. That thing is sharp, though. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, out of the three tools, if I had to grab one to do all of it, to do all the stuff from processing a tree down to firewood, start to finish, limbing it, cutting it down, limbing it peeling its bark off, whatever, splitting it down to small little kindling sizes, this would be a pretty solid option. Yep. What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, any of these will do. Mm -hmm. if they you, all got the job yeah, done. I mean, they yeah. all got it done. If you will do, it will do. Mm -hmm. You think about our ancestors, the, the insurmountable odds they faced, and they did it with stones. So this? Yeah. Any sharp metal thing. I mean, if you can, do, yeah. if you can own something like that, you're winning the lottery of life. Yeah. You know, compared to what people have gotten by with. Now, in the right setting, like in a jungle, 100, mm. percent I would take a machete. Yeah. If I'm going to be the reach, up, the reach of the machete is oh, great. Oh yeah. Having something that you can reach out there and hack the yep. small, viney. Well, when you get advantage. into briars, it's a big advantage because yeah. you got some standoff. You don't get your arms lacerated. Yeah. And you get into cutting real, close to the ground. Yeah, cutting yeah. close to the ground, briar, stuff like that. This will get you in there a little closer and get yeah. you scraped up. But, this you know, would be terrible for that situation. Yeah, that'd be bad. It just won't work. Yeah. It just won't get the job done 
nearly as well. Limbing and stuff like that, the axe is not as good. Yeah, having said that, I still, I've got to go with the Kukri. Mm -hmm. That just, out of all the choppy tools I've used, man, that's yeah. it. I tell you what though, though, I, I've had this Kukri for, what now? Two, three weeks? Mm -hmm. Something like that. And I've used it quite a bit. Yeah. I've, I've beat on it quite a bit and it works really well for a lot of stuff. But mm -hmm. I tell you what, the one thing around my house, especially mm -hmm. now that it's summertime, the one thing that I grab more than any for machete. just whatever is that machete right there. Yeah. And you, you know, you talk about another factor to consider is even though this is shorter, it's heavier. Yeah. This will outweigh a machete. Oh yeah. That's, like, a, that's my, much lighter. Yeah, yeah. You could probably carry two to two and a half machetes for the weight. It's just less this. steel. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, and for, for cutting small green stuff, the speed on the end of that blade, because it's longer, it's yep. going really fast. It just, it's really like a fast, laser beam. Yeah. And it's it's very precise. Thin. Yeah. It's it's over a very thin edge, whereas this has got a lot of mass and more of a displacing type of energy, which makes it good for all things. Yeah. Know, splitting and... Splitting up firewood that. and kindling? Yeah. You're not going to beat this? No. Yeah. No. Something like this. Yeah. And this has the same type of an effect as a hand axe. I butchered a couple deer start to finish with kukris over the years and out of any other tool that's really a, an awesome butchering tool yeah for skinning scraping uh breaking the animal down into sections i mean all of it that yeah. worked really good for but you know like in a jungle for sure probably lean toward a machete yeah if i'm in far north far up big trees full-sized axe i mean every, if you yeah if yeah. you need to chop down large trees yeah then you want an axe for sure, it's gonna be the best thing for it. The best That's chopper it. on big stuff is this. Yeah. But this is an SA Wetterlings axe, a hand forged in Sweden, I believe it is. SA Wetterlings axe, hickory handle. Really like it. Love this little axe. It's it's one of my well, it is my favorite axe. Um, this is a Galavan machete made in Colombia. Very inexpensive, but it's solid. Man, I've beat the crap out of that thing and never had any damage to it um what about that this is a kukri made in nepal um i think it's 10 60 steel something like that yeah and that kukri is made in the states right this is made in texas yeah yeah but that's frank yeah knives by hand because you know that that's another distinction we need to talk about in the survival world we're not cutting rounds like this yeah we're cutting stuff about yeah. the size of your forearm. Yeah, arm size probably the biggest. So yeah. if I'm not going to go out and tackle and fell huge trees, I would still probably choose this. The only time I might not choose it would be in a jungle setting where I needed that extension of reach. Mm -hmm. And then it's more appropriate for what you're doing there. I'll yeah. probably go with the machete. Mm -hmm. I've been packing one of these since I was 10 years old. Have you really? Yeah. A kukri? Yeah. Since you were 10? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that scientific experiment comparing the chopping tools let us know in the comments what your favorite chopping tool is um if you think we're stupid for choosing this over everything else um what's the one thing that you'd grab if you had to do a you know yep. had to head out into the woods and build yourself a, a shelter of sorts um so anyway thanks for watching guys make sure you hit that thumbs up and we'll see you next time